the Sabbath appears to be uh, very, very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Now, man, it's very fine. Now, now, step off the land now. That's one small step for man. project started with trying to recreate a sculpture of a lunar crater and we were recreating a sculpture of a lunar crater that was then turned into a photograph and people believed that it was actually a photo of the moon and so from that starting point we've evolved and are currently still looking at photos, astrological photos, and artist renderings of photos of lunar and planet and other astrological phenomenon, and turning them into photographs and videos. So one hope is that people will look at them and discover that they're not the thing that they think they're looking at, and perhaps when they look at other photographs, be just as suspicious or questioning of the thing that they think that they're looking at and, you know we're, we're specifically coming at it from an idea about science and what a scientific image is and what it means and what value it holds what information it holds and how you understand that information but whereas ours aren't scientific images it just leads to the questions removed from the specific details of science so it could be applicable to any type of image Have you really thought about what it would take to fake a moon landing? There's hardware there. They're, they're like office buildings of blueprints, engineering hours that went behind this and the records of those designs. <laughs> In 2005, these three people believed for five days they were astronauts, 200 kilometers above the Earth's surface on a Russian space shuttle. They were actually in a state-of-the-art Hollywood simulator in an aircraft hangar in England. Solid rocket boosters have ignited. We have <laughs> Filming at a cost of 4.5 million pounds, it was the most elaborate television hoax of all time. An illusion David Copperfield would be proud of. A hoax that required completely transforming an ex-US Air Force base into a fictitious Russian space camp. A state-of-the-art engineering, simulator, and sound design straight from the world of Hollywood. On the launch, we have a hydraulic ram which lifts up. An army of actors trained to improvise for every eventuality. You could tell this group anything about space and they would believe you. And they did. Gravity is like just about anything else. You can actually control it. This is the story of the most elaborate and expensive practical joke you've probably never heard of. This is the story of the Space Cadets. So how was this possible? Why didn't they suspect something was amiss? Well, the answer might lie in a 70-year-old experiment. Group dynamics are one of the most powerful forces in human psychology. In 1951, psychologist Solomon Ash conducted a series of social conformity experiments exploring how individuals' opinions are influenced by the group around them. Participants thought they were taking part in a visual perception test to match the line on the left and determine which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. In reality, everyone else in the room was an actor, under instructions on certain questions to unanimously choose the incorrect answer. Two. 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 75% of those taking part gave at least one incorrect response. Two. Not necessarily because they believed it was right, but because they were potentially thrown off or yielded to the pressure of the group. From this candid camera stunt in 1962, where unwitting participants entered a lift, only to be surrounded by undercover actors who all insisted on facing the rear. In many ways, Space Cadets, with its immersive alternative reality, an army of actors in authority roles, Imagine it's you in there. Why wouldn't you believe it? it? was the ultimate conformity experiment. After three whole weeks of needless exercise, 65 hours of mm, somewhat true lecture, and a final exam, all the cadets passed out. You are all now potential space tourists. The first stage of the illusion was complete. The second would be much harder. 
After all, how do you convince someone that they're blasting off into space without ever leaving the ground? Well, you talk to the experts, Hollywood experts. This is Brick Price. His California-based Wonderworks are the leading special effects company when it comes to replica spacecraft. If you want to create the illusion of space, they are the people to build it. Their replica space shuttle cockpit had previously been used in blockbuster films such as Deep Impact and Space Cowboys. Using that as a starting point, they got to work converting it into a fully-fledged space simulator. A giant screen 7 metres tall and 20 metres wide would provide a vivid IMAX-style image of planet Earth out of the front-facing windows. It's Space Gym, but not as you know it. Huge pneumatic airbags would be programmed to keep the simulator moving 24 hours a day. About a half an hour I find that I, I need to get my land legs back. And during liftoff, a giant hydraulic ram would lift the entire front section of the shuttle, and then they needed noise, lots of it. So they recruited top Hollywood sound designer Dean Andre. Concealing 40 speakers throughout the walls and ceilings of the set to create the sound of the launch, he combined recordings from an actual shuttle launch and F-14 fighters. We're taking off, we're taking off. The rockets kick in. And boom. I'm actually feeling like you're taking off. Ah, oh, this is impressive. But there was still one gigantic black hole-sized admission from the whole experience. Weightlessness. We can tell them what we want. They were told it wouldn't be a vertical takeoff. This craft cannot take you into deep space. That it's unlikely you'll experience weightlessness. They were then given a backstage tour of the shuttle hangar they'd be blasting off from the next day. Oh my god! More smoke and mirrors, in this case literally to disguise the fact there wasn't actually a real spacecraft for them to see, making do with a hastily assembled nose cone and some movie magic special effects. The first four British astronauts in space. Three, two, the launch astonishingly went as planned. We're doing 28,000 kilometers per hour right now. This is amazing. This is amazing. We are going so fast. And while their bodies weren't experiencing the g-force you'd expect if you're actually launching into space. No g-force, so you didn't sort of like kind of just sit back like that. It feels like we're still on the ground. When Drew says, right, we're in space now, I was like, what? They all quickly pushed to the back of their minds with this incredible moment where the view out of the cockpit was revealed and the cadets looked down at what they thought was the curvature of the Earth for the first time. It's absolutely amazing. We've just seen, we've just seen the Earth. Like, I can't even believe I'm saying that sentence. We're just so happy. The challenge was, having made three members of the public genuinely believe they're in space, where do you go from there? I kind of feel like it's not real. Are we actually in space? But how would the cadets on board fare when it was revealed their historical accomplishment was just a big and expensive joke? Hello there, Billy Kerry Paul. A tape play back to them in the capsule their own suspicions. Everything feels a bit caravan -y. To give them one last chance to work it out for themselves. We could just be in a simulator at the moment. Oh, oh no. I knew it! It's time to come home. What? Meanwhile, stagehands transported the pod oh, into the studio. No! 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 Before the doors were finally flung open. Oh, no! It's fair to say their initial reactions made for slightly uncomfortable viewing at the time. I'm a little bit like broken-hearted. You're not actually in Russia at all. That's the big thing. You're in England. <laughs> You've actually gone through things that we'll never experience here. You've known what it's like to believe you're looking at the Earth. I'll never have that. For me, one of the joys of television is one of the few mediums where budget, ambition, scale, spectacle can all come together, not necessarily to change the world, but to launch someone into fictional space. And that's kind of sad. If you wanted to fake the moon landing, you would have to fake all of these documents. And it just seems to me it's way easier to just go to the moon. <laughs> Has anyone considered that? <laughs> just go to the moon. That's easier than faking all of this. <laughs> Twenty twenty three. Humankind will once again head to the moon. The first civilian lunar mission. Dear Moon. This mission will be spearheaded by Japanese entrepreneur Yusaku Maizawa.
And today, he is announcing a new challenge for his future crew. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm MG. I'm MG. えー、今日は僕の自宅からお届けしてるんですがこれ皆さん知ってますか長谷川東博っていう日本を代表する作家の、まあ、代表作です、えー、今日は約2年ぶりになりますけれども「ディアームーンプロジェクトで大きな発表があります結論から言います同乗者を募集します8名世界中から今回募集します全員でおそらく10名から12名の旅になるんですけれどもそのうちのなんと8名を募集しちゃおうじゃないかっていう発表です今から2年後2023年中を予定してますでご存知の通りスペース X 社の、えー、現在開発中のスターシップっていうロケットに乗って行くことになりますで月に行くまで3日間で月の裏側を通って戻ってくるのに3日間費用は僕が全部出しますもうチケットは全部買ってますしもう貸し切りの船になりますんでえそこに10人から12人乗っていくことになりますけどみんなで楽しい旅にしたいなと思いますで当初ですね2年前え僕はこう言ってました世界中のアーティストの皆さんにお声がけして一緒に行こう、まあ、そんな旅にしたいとこういう発表してましたけれどもちょっとだけ変わりましたなんで変わったかえアーティストって一体誰のこと言ってんだろうって分かんなくなりました歌を歌ってればいいのかダンスをしてればいいのか本を書いてればいいのかどういう人が一体アーティストなんだろうっていうふうにちょっと分かんなくなりましてもしかしたら世界中で何か何かしらこうクリエイティブな活動をしている人こういう人すべてアーティストって言ったっていいじゃないかっていうふうにそんなふうに思うようになったんですねでそういう意味でもっともっと世界中の多くの方々にチャンスを与えられるんじゃないかって。Let's see what Elon Musk has to say. About the Dear Moon mission. What's really significant about the Dear Moon mission is that it'll be the first、uh, private space flight, first commercial space flight、uh, with humans beyond Earth orbit. So, this has never occurred before, and in fact, it's,、uh, gonna, we're going to go past the moon. So, it'll actually end up being further.、Uh, this, this mission, we expect、uh, people will go further than any human has ever gone from planet Earth. So, I think this will be very exciting for people to.、Uh, Tune in and,、uh, and, and watch this and, and enjoy it vicariously.、Uh, and I know that、uh, Amiyazawa is、uh, also providing、uh, places on the ship for、uh, artists and others to join. So he wants this to be something that is exciting、uh, and inspiring for the whole world. I'm going to be the most happy to be here. I'm going to be the most happy to be here. I'm going to be the most happy to be here. ここのの地球を自分の目でで確かめることですそして月からぐるっと回って、えー、出てくる時にですねアースライズという現象がもしかしたら見れるかもしれません、えー、サンライズと同じように地球がまるでこう日の出のように月の端からこう浮き上がってくるそんな光景を目にした時どんな感動が待ってるんでしょうか、えー、3つあります1つ目好奇心です、えー、まだ見たことのないもの行ったことのない場所に行きたいというこの好奇心を満たしたい二つ目地球の素晴らしさを改めて感じたい自分の生まれ育った地球偉大な地球ここに改めて感謝したい三つ目自分の小ささ自分の未熟さこれを改めて実感したいちょっと怖いですけどそんなことより好奇心が上回るしイーロンはじめスペース X チームの技術チームワークを信頼してますそれはイーロン・マスクに聞いてください Yes, I'm, I'm highly confident that、uh, we will have reached orbit many times with Starship before 2023、uh, and that it will be safe enough for human transport by 2023 It's looking very, very promising Yeah, I think for sure、uh, anyone who is interested in、uh, joining on this mission, I think、uh, they'll love it. This will be historic、um, and I think very fun and interesting and inspiring and exciting. Great. Thank you very much for your support. Now, what are you going to do? I'm going to be a part of the world. I'm going to be a part of the world. I'm going to be a part of the world. I'm going to be a part of the world. I'm going to be a part of the world. ありがとうございました